Well, welcome. My name is Valentin Viktorovich Varashilov. I bet a couple of students can pronounce this name the way I do. But don't worry, <coughs> I have a smaller version. Please call me Mr. V. Let me tell you a couple of things about myself. I grew up in Russia, got my master's in Russia, got my PhD in Russia, and the peak of my career moved in the US, started from square one, work at BU, run demonstration facility, teach physics, not just at BU, at different places as well. <coughs> as you can imagine, English is not my native language, so that's your problem. <laughs> but so far, that hasn't been an obstacle to anyone, because, well, if you want me to say something clearer, just raise your hand and ask a question. I've been teaching math and physics many years, broad spectrum of learners, fifth graders, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, two-year college students, four-year college students, university students. At the edge of this spectrum, students with learning disabilities, middle and high school students. So when I teach, if I'm doing something, I know what I'm doing, I know why I'm doing that. But it doesn't make me a perfect teacher because nobody's perfect. Of course. So, please, read the disclaimer on a think, uh, second page or third page of this syllabus. And reading the syllabus is a part of your first homework assignment. You know, it's important. It describes you <coughs> everything about this course. I'm going to point at several things but I'm not going to repeat the whole syllabus. Uh, if you want, you can Google me. You'll find some stuff about me. Well, years ago, people would say, you can find me, I'm in a book. Now people say, you can find me, I'm in Google. Or Yahoo. Or NSA. You will find that people have been given me contradictory reviews, very opposite, which is a natural, absolutely natural thing. You are different, and some of you will experience my teaching, well, differently from some other. And, uh, well, <coughs> lucky me, more people gave me positive results, otherwise the department won't let me teach, of course. So, another thing is I have some speech deficiency, I have to speak in a certain way, so the way I sound depends on my <coughs> muscles in, the fro in my <coughs> throat, and it has nothing to do to what I may think, what I may feel, you know, Any questions so far? All right. This is the example from the last year grade. These are the boundaries between letter grades. It doesn't mean this year the boundaries are going to be exactly the same. They will be close, similar, but not exactly the same. Uh, it depends on the final distribution, of course. So <coughs> there are some rules which that has to be fulfilled. For example, the boundary between two letter grades should be large enough to make it stable relative to errors of calculations. So this is an example why the boundary has been drawn here. Because the difference between this grade and this grade is about a half of a point. All other numbers are much smaller. So in your case, I'm not sure where it's going to be, maybe slightly lower, maybe slightly higher, but slightly, so, you know. <coughs> and this is an actual excerpt from uh, an email from a student. 
There is no such a thing as round it up a final grade. It's like running a race. Yeah. Everybody gets some time, and the difference may be microseconds, but still, there is a difference. So the best strategy is just not losing any points. Your homework grades, 100% free for you. You just put some effort, that's it. Your lab grades, again, it's free money. You just come to the lab room and you do the lab. That's it. So it all comes down to the exams. And to achieve the highest exam grade, all you have to do is just practice. So do your homework. Make sure you understand the solution of each problem. It, you know, it's not enough to just have it solved. It's fine if you're having a help with solving a certain problem. That's exactly what you have to do if you're not sure what to do. But uh, it's advisable then to come back to that same problem and try to solve it completely on your own, just to make sure you know how it works. Be active, be organized. That means simple things. If you have a question, raise your hand. If you have a problem, send an email, come to office hours. Don't wait. And be organized means don't waste your time. Don't wait again till the last day. Start working immediately. And I, I know that in this room, there are people with different backgrounds and, for example, Someone might have taken advanced physics class before and relatively, you know, not long time ago. Some people might have never taken physics and some people might have encountered any math exercises years ago. And of course that difference in the backgrounds means only one thing. You may want to put slightly different effort into getting the same level of success. Everybody, everybody can get an A. If we had an A+, plus, everybody could get an A+. Plus. It's just a matter of these two things. That's it. Nothing different. <coughs> and uh, this is what physics requires from everyone. Imagination. Why is it important? Well, because when we study phenomena, in physics, we usually run some experiments, and of course it's just impossible to run all experiments related to what we study. So instead of actually experimenting with things, we have to imagine those experiments. We have to imagine how things are moving in space, interacting with each other. Mathematics, you know, eventually, all goes down to calculating some stuff. And the web assign provides, well, I wouldn't say it's a test, it's more like a self-survey. Uh, right after it will be closed, I'm going to post the answers on a blackboard, and you can check your answers with the correct answers. I'm not sure it's going to be maybe in a couple of days. There is still, still time. To do this, plus doing this actually again, just getting free money because after finishing this exercise, you're automatically getting a half of a point towards your homework grade. Good, use it. <coughs> Trial and error. If you read a problem and if you know what to do, it's not a problem. It's a task. You just do it. If you don't know what to do, that's the problem. And uh, all you have to do is just start trying. If you didn't succeed the first time, try and try again, right? But trying the same thing which didn't work is insane. So you, when you try, you have to try something new, something different. And if you become an efficient problem solver in physics, you can solve any problem in your life. Trust me. What do you 
think about physics. How would you finish this sentence? So how a clicker works? If you think this word hard fits the best, you will, pr will not now, I'm not collecting yet. You see, you see, when I start collecting your responses, this becomes a square, not yet. So right now I just want to explain how to uh, read this problem. So if you think this, press 1. If you think this, press 2. For example, if you, th if you think both hard and boring, press 5. This question is anonymous. I'm not going to judge anyone. Don't worry. All right. Now, <coughs> let's see. So I've told you something about myself. Now I want to know something about the audience. Uh, I try to adjust my lectures to an average student. So if you're above average, if taking physics, you may know everything already, prepared to be bored. But if you haven't been taking physics a long time ago, so, uh, well, you just have to, again, work a little bit harder than your well, neighbor. That's it. Interesting. So let's see. Every year, the distribution is slightly different. The most popular answer is six. What six stands for? Oops. Can't hear. Can't see. One and four. One is hard. Four is fun. Well, you're flattering. But it's good you think it's fun. It's not good you think it's hard, because it's not. And one of my goals is to well, at least try to prove that it's not so hard. It has a certain logic. If you understand that logic, that's it. And it's much harder to learn how to walk the rope than to solve a physical problem on how to walk the rope. So put in <laughs> perspective. Physics is much easier than many, many, many other things in life. This week we're going to talk about motion and several last pages of the syllabus cover all topics, all of them, for the whole course. It says, do not read this slide, so do not read this slide. It's basically just an illustration of what we're going to learn within one week of this class. So, and if you remember the grades, people have done it successfully and many, many times. <coughs> you don't have to memorize everything. Uh, I will provide the equation sheet, but as we know now, Grade-wise, everything goes down to having a best grade possible on each exam. And if you have unlimited time for your homework, you have only two hours for the exam. So time management during the exam is also a certain skill. And uh, compare two students, one is trying to find the equation on the sheet. So that might take some seconds. For like four or six or seven problems, that might take minutes. And another one doesn't spend that time because that person keeps everything in the memory. So who has a better chance? Think about it. Let's start talking about physics. Any questions in general? Please, yes. Yes, and uh, not immediately, maybe in three, four hours after the lecture, it will be, well, not the lecture, the link to the lecture will be available again on the Blackboard. Well, it's learned.bu.edu website. More questions? Yes? No, and yes. What does it mean? It means if we have a certain problems on kinematics, 
on the first exam, we're not going to have the same problem on the last exam. So technically, it's like two weeks of the course and exam on this material, then two weeks on exam of that material, and then two weeks on exam on that material. But because in physics, some things are related to previously learned things, it's kind of becomes a cumulative. 